Sorry. Um, okay, good evening, um, Cassandra. Uh, one more time, uh, this is, we are going to be having a chess class, and trust me, we'll be dealing with the um, introduction to chess from the beginning to um, the point where I can put you to be an intermediate player, okay? So for starters, okay. um, this is what we're going to start with. Um, this is the chessboard. Okay, the very first okay, question sir. I'm going to ask you is what can you see on this chessboard? I believe you've read the book, um, Every Beginner's um, um, Chess Textbook with um, 250 yeah, points. I, yeah. So, so um, okay, from there, I'll just start grilling, drilling you and let's go. So, what can you see on the board? Um, light green squares and dark screen, green squares. No, you see, you're saying light green squares and dark squares. So, I think, nah. And okay. Light squares and dark squares, but they are green. Okay. Okay. Wait. Let me let me explain the green part of the chessboard. You see, um, let me give you in a very story, in a very interesting story format. The way I teach my kids as well. Tell them there are two guys, um, Femi and Kole. They actually met themselves on the road and um, they got talking and. Um, Femi said he knows how to play chess. And the next thing Kuli was going to say, come on, really? Are you sure? Because he also knows how to play chess. I'm like, really? Okay, that's interesting. Uh, so, um, Femi was in doubt, like, because he knows Kuli is a very jovial guy and kind of funny. So it's possible Kuli does not even know how to play chess. But he was like, okay, Femi, you know what, Kuli? What is the color of your chess? Mm -hmm. The next thing Kuli was going to say, and the color of Komon, I have a chess at home. The color is just uh, green and white. And the next thing Femi was like, no, that you see, you do not have to play chess. Actually, the color of the chessboard should be blue and white, because I have one at home. And the next, no, green and white, no, yes, blue and white, everybody started arguing. Fine. So, at one point, um, Kole needed to be sure how to follow Femi to his house. And gets to Femi's house, he saw the chessboard. It's actually white and blue. I'm like, wow, seriously? So, they went to Kole's house and met Kole's board. It's also white and green. So in order to so in order to stop this kind of argument, like well, you know, so the point is we now give them a general color. So we have any colored squares like this as the dark squares, while the light remains white squares. So you can see yellow and black. If you say yellow and black chessboard, then that means the yellow will be the light squares and the black will definitely be the dark squares. Do you understand how that works? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I understand that one. Cause uh, let me show you something different. Let, let me show you something. Um, board design. Let me try and change the color of the light squares to something like green and um, change the color of the dark squares to being dark. Let me see. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, oh, to be that's, something darker. That's something darker. Okay, we said mm -hmm. white. <laughs> white square is green. Uh, let's use, okay, let me use something like maybe yellow. And let's use black as uh, maybe blue. Let's just do something like that. <coughs> so, bless it. When I apply this, Unfortunately, this board is not showing very well. It's um, okay, cool. Wait, wait a second. Let me just get something straight. Uh, do a new game. Click OK. Now you see what I'm talking about. It, it only changed the pieces here. Sorry, it's not even changing the board as I wanted it to change it. This is not. Oh, okay. It's not changing the board like I wanted to change it. That's so terrible. So it should be white, but you changed the color of the chair. You know, yes, I, I wanted it to. I wanted it to change the color of the um board. Change but, the board. Yes, but it's just board. Aha! Uh -huh, see, now it changed the color of the board. Can you see now? This it's is white, white and, and black. black. Yeah. <laughs> you understand the idea? So um, that yeah. is how it works. Um, standard layouts. I'm coming. Let me return it back to practice. I love this. I, I love this one better than the other one. So um, clear the board. I don't want anything on the board. Good, perfect. So now, we've talked about how we arrived at the white squares and the dark squares. The light squares and the dark squares. Now, let's go further. Let's look at um, how many squares do we have on this chessboard very fast. Don't tell me you are reading it from the book. So you have to close that book. We have 32 light, 32 dark, that are 64 squares. Oh, that's 32. That's correct. 32 light squares, 32 dark squares, everything took on 64. Please do me a favor, close that book. I've closed it and I've kept it. <laughs> you don't need a book, actually, trust me. So, for now... Okay. So, well, light squares, dark squares. 32 light squares, 32 dark squares. We had everything together, it becomes 64. No problems. So, now, let's look at something. Let's talk about the names of the squares on the chessboard. Let me start with this. Follow, follow my lead. 
this is a1, this is a4, this is c6, this is f7. What square is this? I'm going to be, that is d4. Exactly. So what square is this? That is h7. Exactly. Those are the coordinates. That's how we know the names of the squares in the transport. So you can ask, yeah. you know, to get to a point when you're playing chess that you can just say, okay, um, something, something is going to F3, or from F3, it can go to G5, from G5, it can go to, you know, you can just talk in squares. That's the language of chess players, okay? So, yeah. um, now that we've talked about the names of the squares, now just understand that this vertical line here, it's a file. There are three lines on the chessboard. Mm -hmm. So we have the file, that's the vertical line, mm -hmm. and we have the ranks, the horizontal line, and we have the last one. What is it? If you can remember. Diagonal. Diagonal line. Thank you very much. So these right. are the three lines that are very important that you must know on the chessboard. The vertical line, the horizontal line, and the diagonal line. Very, very important. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> you, you will be needing yeah. this exactly when you start moving the pieces. That's the truth. So, three lines on the chessboard. Vertical line, horizontal line, diagonal line. So we can call this the file again, the A file. The B file, D files, D C file, C to file, H files, D files, D files, then the ranks. The ranks. The fr first, first rank, rank, second rank, exactly rank. to the eighth rank. That's wonderful. That's really, really wonderful of you. I'm, 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 I'm very, very, I'm delighted. Okay, let's go on. We've talked about the um, the number of um, squares we have on the chessboard. We've talked about the colors, light square, dark squares. We've talked about the lines on the chessboard. And now we've talked about the coordinates, the names of yeah. the squares on the chessboard. So that is everything you need to know about the um, chessboard for now. So we quickly we delve into the, the pieces on the chessboard. So I'm going to introduce the chess pieces. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. Good. So the very first thing you have to know, I have to go to go in the storyline. Of course, you read it in the book. Now, story, story. Story. Uh, once upon a time. <laughs> time, time. Okay. Anyways, um, in like, that's the king. That's in, in for like five thousand years um um ago um. There is, of course, there are all these kingdoms. We have lots of kingdoms, different kind of kingdoms. The question is, in every kingdom, somebody is very important. And who is that person? The king. The king, of course. So the king is always having a cross crown on his head. That's how you will know whoever the king is. He's always having a cross crown on his head. So the king gets to marry who? That's very simple. The king is very important. Yes. He's going to marry who? Who is the king going to marry? Yeah. One. yeah. The queen. Of course. Me. <laughs> okay, you. Okay. Oh, uh, I know. I understand. The king gets to marry the queen. That's cool. The king marries the queen, and um, on their wedding day, somebody is going to pray for them. These guys are church goers. They go to the church. Okay. So who's going to pray for them? The bishop. The bishop. I'm a Catholic, Dave. You're a Catholic. Weak, exactly. Bishop. So yeah, why that's interesting. Yeah. Since you're a Catholic, now you understand that it's the bishop. Now imagine you go to, uh, maybe you are teaching in a school or you get to meet um, some Muslims, you know, and you want to teach them chess and you ask them, you are giving them this kind of story and you're saying the king married the queen and in the wedding day, somebody prayed for them. Who do you think they're going to mention? I think Imam. Exactly. Or so Imam. Imam. They are definitely going to call the Imam or Alpha. So the next thing you're going to do is, well, in, it's true, it's correct. But in chess, we call that same Imam or Alpha, we call them, we call them bishops. That's bishop. It. Exactly. So we have one bishop, one for the king, and one for the queen. That's the name in chess. Yeah. So one for the yeah. king, one for the queen. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, once the king, um, after the yeah. bishop pronounced the king and the queen husband and wife, prayed for them, and the next thing is the king needs to go to his house. Remember 5,000 years ago, we don't have cars. We I think we live in the kind of primitive way. No cars, no helicopters, no bicycles, no tricycles. So what is the form of transportation do you think a king is going to use to take his wife to his house? The name of the it animal. It is up yet. He's using, he's using juju. <laughs> Night. Oil. He's going to use the horse, actually. Okay, fine. Uh, Juju doesn't work. That's the, the spirit, he can disappear. It's going to be weird. Terrible. So we have the knights, the horses. So we actually, there's a story behind the horses. Okay. So, but I just used it so that people can remember how to um, determine the chess pieces. The horses yeah. um, is more like what is going to carry the king and the queen to the kingdom. But in reality, 
knights are fighters, you know, real life. We call them knights. It's not like they're yeah. horses. Uh, so, but yeah, for the it's sake, not knights. It's like for fighter, you know. Exactly, they're... heroes. Uh, and, uh, and they call them serfs in London. Uh, knights in shining armor. Aha! Uh -huh, exactly. Thing. You get the idea. But for the sake of mm. understanding um, the um, um, the concept of the pieces, so the storyline: the king married the queen. The bishop prayed for them. The knights that are the horses are the ones that are going to take the king and queen to their respective houses. And where does the king live? Castle. Castle, thank you very much. The king's living castles. Mm. And mm. Um, the castles in chess are called rooks. Actually, there is a term mm. in chess called castling. So that's why we have to we have to change um the castling, I mean the castle's name to rooks. Just have to interpose mm. rook, out of the book. Okay. So we have two rooks. One for the king. This rook here is for this king, while this rook here is for this queen. So I think this is where the concept of daddy's bedroom and mommy's bedroom came out from. Because the king has his own castle, the mm -hmm. queen has her own castle. So sometimes when the king needs the uh, attention of the queen, you will hear um, he's going to send his servants and they will go to the queen's castle and like the king summons you. <laughs> so you have to go summon the queen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the king has to go to the queen's side. So don't worry when you get to the point of casting, you will understand what I'm talking about. Next, once the king... Yeah, casting is when ah, the king ah, 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 and the rook... Hold on, hold on. <laughs> uh, you've read a lot from the book, I understand. Okay, let's go. Um, I'm not even finished. I know you've not finished. Don't worry, it's little by little. But I, I feel you were enjoying the book. It's not just reading it for just reading it. But you're really, really enjoying yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Mm, now, I enjoyed it now. Good, that's good. Okay, the king married... Again, we agree that the king married the queen. The queen... Um, Bishops prayed for them. Um, the horses, the knights took them home. Now the king lives in a castle. Now the king got to the castle. Now he's hungry. He needs to eat like fried rice, chicken, or something. Please, who's going to do the cooking? The servants, the, the pawns. The servants, which are the pawns. That's great. The servants are the pawns. So the servants, the pawns. Eight pawns. Eight pawns. It does go. We go. We have two, eight three, servants. four, five. Um, six, seven, eight. These are the eight pawns on the chessboard. That's the white pieces. Now, this makes the entire white kingdom. The, and um, there is a small yeah. song or poem that you can use to identify these pieces just in case, you know, something like this. It goes okay. Like, um, rook, um, sorry. Sorry about that. Rook, uh -oh. why is that? Okay, sorry. Uh, we have rook, knight, bishop, then rook, knight, bishop, king and queen together, then the pawns at the front. See, very simple. So, rook, knight, bishop, rook, rook knight, knight bishop, bishop, rook, knight, bishop, king and queen together, then the eight pawns at the front. Exactly, the pawns at the front. Now, notice something. You know, ladies, you guys like to match. We get dressing. Like you're putting on um, a white gown, you would like to put on a white what? Your shoe would be what color? Shoe. If you're putting white on, bag, white scarf. Exactly, white bag, white scarf. But this case, it's the match. So in the this white, case, the white queen or the white square. Or the light square. Has coat, the black light. has to be facing the black queen on the black square. Now, look, remember, it is not black. It is dark. White queen, white square, black no. queen, black square. No. It has Sorry, dark. Dark, dark. Exactly. The word is dark. The word I is dark. Good. So while the, for white will be light. So white queen, light square. So when you're talking about the squares, you're talking of light and dark. Yeah. But we're talking about the pieces, you can say white yeah. pieces and black pieces. You talk about white and black. Exactly. Yeah. So white queen on the light pieces and black no, no, no. queen on the dark pieces. No, no, Sorry. no. Sorry. No. Let me know. What are you white doing? queen uh -huh. on the light. light <laughs> queen on the, the light square exactly. then black queen on the you know okay cool let's continue from there <clears throat> we've talked about the piece we've talked about every uh, piece on the chessboard for the moment so um don't forget something the king is the most important piece on the chessboard very very important why the queen on the other hand is the yeah. most powerful piece on the chessboard so there are two different things king is the most important the queen is the most mm -hmm. powerful. So yeah. I will tell you why the queen. I'll tell you why the queen is the most powerful later on in the future and why the king is the most important. Because she can go in all direction. <gasps> oh my god, she's ready. There is no king without a palace. 
<laughs> she read it up from the book. Okay, relax, calm down. Let's take it one by one. So next, quickly, we go further sure. to talk about the um, to the black pieces. The black pieces, of course. So the black pieces also we have the um, black king who married the black queen, and on the wedding day we had um, a bishop. The bishop, the bishop praying for them, and they took the. The knights, yeah, carried, knights, the horses carry them home, the knights. Then we have um, to their castles, there's the rooks. And same yeah. thing, this man is hungry, this time around, this one probably wants to eat something like fufu and, um, you know, and ogbono, definitely. Amala. Amala, whatever. The, the ponds there are still going to be the ones that are going to be cooking for um, the wonderful king at that point. Rapture has taking place. Yes. Yeah, we'll be there. <laughs> Okay, um, so let's go ahead. With, so we talk about uh, the movement of the pieces. Ready? Let's start with the rope. Yeah. Now, of course, from the from what you read, how does the rope move? The rope moves um plus in a plus sign movement. Okay. Plus. Forward and vertically and horizontally. Exactly, vertically and horizontally for the sake of junior primary schools or something. I tell them the rook only moves up, down, left, right. Because sometimes by the time these guys start to pronounce vertical and pronounce horizontal, maybe some, you know, milk teeth will have started removing in the classes. So I decide to say, okay, you guess what, guys? Rook moves up. So down. wait, you're showing only three signs. Your arrows are showing only, okay. Rook okay. moves up, down, left, right. Simple. Okay. Just up, right. down, left, right. Simple. Yeah. So, um, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. It means in this position, this rook can actually move two steps forward if it likes, if it decides to move two steps forward. Now, look at this. Look at it now. The rook can move from e8 to e2. Now, remember when I was teaching, when we were talking yeah. about notation. So, the rook can move from e2 to yes, to move to a2. And the rook can move from a2 and move yeah. up to, um, uh, what is it called? A7. A7. Exactly. So that's how the rook moves. So let us quickly do something interesting. Um, let's have the monster rook on the chessboard. And we're going to use this rook to capture virtually all these pieces as fast as possible. Okay. Monster rook. This is just to um, emphasize the movement of the rook. Good. So which of these pieces can this rook capture first right now? The black knight. On what square? By going on the... What is the name of the square again? F7. Perfect. Rook goes to F7. Captures a knight. That's the very first one. Which one is next? Rook goes to F4. Four. Rook F4, correct. So which one is next? Then he goes to C F4, C4, Rook to C4, C2, C2, C2. H2, uh-huh, good, H. Six. H six, okay. H six and finally what? Hey, let's look at show she did three. H six and finally what? Yeah. And finally, um, then B6. B6, thank you very much. That's it. So that's it. <clears throat> that, sums, B6. that sums up how the rook moves. Totally. Now, there's one thing you must understand that the rook, yeah. the rook can never ever jump over its own pieces. It's not possible. It can never, not possible. The rook can jump over its own pieces. And the rook cannot um, um, jump on. It's own piece because like white cannot capture white. They are friends, so cannot love. So white can capture white, um, but white can actually capture black. So let's assume we have this um, black bishop here. Is it possible for this rook to capture the bishop on C two um, on B two? Is it possible? Yes or no? No. No. It's 
cans because you cannot even jump over on that pace. Exactly. So that's the idea. So that's everything we need to know about the room. No, it's not possible. Good. That's everything we need to know about the room. So next, let's talk about um, the bishop for now. That's everything you need to know about the room for now. Let's talk about the bishop. Bishop is next. Now, from the book you read, how does the bishop move? Diagonally. Thank it you. moves. Just diagonals. Times, like multiplication people. Yeah, like multiplication Diagonally is like the opposite. <laughs> and you see, that's the good news about bishop. The bishop, you yeah. always have two. Why? One is moving on the light squares, while the other one would be moving on the dark squares. Um, they are like two parallel lines. They can never ever mix. It's not possible. Bishops can never ever meet. See? They can never ever meet. One moves on the light square, one moves on the dark squares. It's simple. Okay, so since the bishop moves diagonally, the same thing, the bishop cannot jump over pieces, just like the rook. It can't jump over pieces, but the bishop can actually capture other pieces, I mean, opposite colored pieces. For example, uh, we can have this bishop here, and has can, uh, then we have ask, simple question, um, something like this. This is very simple. So which of these pieces can um, the bishop capture? The rook or the, or the rook or the knight? The rook. Of course, diagonally. It's basic, right? It's very the simple. The bishop will capture the rook. Exactly. That's the only piece that you can capture there. So let's yeah. let's quickly have the monster bishop and uh, let's use the bishop to capture uh, many of these chess pieces on the chess board that we have. This this, this. Um, in no in no run in no um order. Let's just go and go 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 go. And probably there is any there. Ready? Uh oh, this is bad. Let's stop there. Let's go. Which one are we capturing first? He is capturing the knight on e4. Knight on e4. Which one is next? Then he's capturing. Then he's capturing the queen on g6. Queen on g6. Which one is next? Then he's capturing the knight on e8. Knight on e8. Which one is next? Then he's capturing the bishop on b6. No, no, no. There's no bishop on b6. Sorry. Sorry, b5. b5, correct. Okay. b5, b5. Yeah, correct. Go on. Then he's capturing the rook on e, e2. Then he's capturing the knight on g4. Is that all? Then it's capturing the rook on c8. Perfect. So the bishop simply moves in this format. Boom, boom. C8. The rook on c8. Yes, you're correct. Correct. Very correct. Boom, boom, boom. That's it. The rook on c8. I think it's that's network lagging. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Diagonal. Yeah. So quietly, we've done about the rook, we've done about the bishop. So next. Let's talk quickly about the queen. Now, the queen, on the other hand, is different from the bishop and the rook. Now, this is where I said I was going to tell you why the queen is very powerful. Now, the queen has two superpowers, okay? It means it can move. Because you can move in all directions. Exactly. I'm moving both the bishop and the rook. Exactly. Direction, both diagonally and horizontally and vertically. Exactly. So, uh-oh, this is terrible. Sorry. Uh... I'm, I'm very terrible. I am drawing. <laughs> Sorry. But anyways, I'm trying. Diagonals. That's horizontal diagonals. Um, now, because this queen, you see, the queen can control all the squares on the chessboard. So, we said the queen is the most powerful. If you leave the rook alone on the chessboard, the rook will be controlling just 14 squares. If you leave the bishop alone at the middle of the, on the middle of the chessboard, it will also be controlling, um, it will be controlling 13 squares to be precise. But once you put the queen there, True. it will be taking 14 yeah. plus 13 to make it 27. So because the queen takes um, um, yeah. as more control of squares, then we we agree that the queen is the most powerful piece on the chessboard. Because once it stays, look at all these squares are totally in danger. That's just the point. Nothing goes there. You can see that's that's like a satellite. You can see all these things over there at the same time. So yeah. 
Uh, exactly. Now imagine you have if one queen is in twenty seven squares, then you have two queens. That's fifty four squares that you're already controlling. Once the two of them are in the center of the chair, and there's almost sixty four. Just remaining ten. Exactly, just remaining ten. So, uh, the queen is a very powerful piece. Unlike the king, unlike when we talk about the king, you understand what I'm talking about. The queen here, um, we've already agreed it can move um, vertically, horizontally, and diagonally. So this is where we're gonna show. Um, the queen can only the king can only move one step forward, course, one, one step. step left, one step right. Good, that's it. The king moves one step. It's more like it's an old man that just takes one step at a time. Okay. With very limited movement. Very limited movement, and that can be annoying. But it's not. Uh, it, it, it can be annoying to the players. But the truth of the matter is, kings actually don't rush to do anything. In fact, they come late for meeting, and uh, you know, uh, let me see. Uh, after coming late for a meeting. And they will still be like, if you are late, you are in trouble. Imagine. You are yeah. late, you are in trouble. But when they are late, no, but nothing happens. They have to wait. The meeting does not stop. Uh, stop um, is, is, till, uh, is, that, is that what men used to do now? It, that that men used to it's do? It's not about being men. It's about being the king. Even if you be the queen. Even the queen of England, people have to wait. Do you understand? Do you get it? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So that's how it works. It's, it, it's a function of power. Yeah. Power, respect. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, I think um, maybe yeah. I should stop somewhere here. Uh, bam, 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 bam. Okay, this in this should be should, this we should do it. We're gonna use this queen to capture all these pieces one by one. So let's go. The queen, right? Yes, we're gonna use this queen to capture all the pieces. Is it a queen? Yes, no, that's what we're gonna use. That's a queen. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um. Okay. Why is it the card the knight on h4? On h4 first, yes. Next. Sorry, wait. Okay. Then, why is it the card the queen on h7? Okay. Who's next? Why is it the card the bishop on b1? The word is capture, actually. So, not catch. <laughs> it's not police and thief. <laughs> Is it captured now? No, you said you said catch. You said catch. You said you're going to then, catch. Oh, oh, sorry. No problems. Then why is it to capture exactly. the rook on b6? Rook on b6 is next. That was next. Oh, my sister, I'm going. There are different ways anyway. So why is it to capture the, the pawn on d6? Pawn on d6 is next. And finally. Then the bishop on e5. Bishop on e5. So that's it. That's how the queen captures. So we are, well, let's start moving. Queen takes. Queen takes. Um, queen goes down to take the bishop diagonally. You move vertically. You move horizontally. Then you move diagonally. That's how the bishop. I mean the queen moves. So simple. Now the king. The king is the most important piece on the chessboard. Why? Because once the king is trapped, caught, the king can never be captured. Once the king is trapped, the game is over. And one more thing you must understand is you can never have two kings on the chessboard. There's one king, but you can have more than one queen on the chessboard. Don't worry, when we get to pump promotion, I'll tell you that. Yeah. But for now, the king moves one square. But there are already two kings on the chessboard. No, 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 no. I'm saying whites can't have two kings. As in you can't have two white kings on the chessboard. You can't have two white kings. Neither can you have oh, two black okay. kings. Sure, sure, exactly. understand. Because we use, yeah, yeah. Because we can use, because we can use the pawns to represent to promote. To promote. Don't worry. I know you've read far in the book. That's interesting. Don't worry, we'll get there. Just little by little, take your time. Don't rush it. Good. Um, the king moves just one square. So one square, vertically, horizontally, and that. Uh, one square at a time. Yes, it moves one square. The same way um, the queen moves. But the difference is it only moves one square. Moves. They are one square. So and it also captures At the time, one square. Because this one is limited. Yes, and it also captures one square. But there is something you must understand. The king can never ever commit suicide. What's that, <laughs> <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? It means the king will never go to a square where it is not safe or where it will be under attack. So you can never force the king to go to a square way to be under attack. For example, I'm going to put a rook um, inside the king here, something like this. So now you will see it is not possible for this king to come to um, e5 just because the rook is attacking that square. 
And the king cannot go to f5, see the rook is still taking control of those squares. And the king can never come to um, d4, neither can the king come to d3, just because the rook is still keeping an eye on those squares. So the only safe squares for the king to go to are, uh, we have e3, we have f4, and we have f3, and there is one more. So that the figures the king should not go on. They are probably didn't get that. I'm saying the king can't go to these red squares just because the rook is controlling those squares. These, these gray squares are the only squares the king can go to. Yeah. There is one more square that the king can go to and it will be safe. Can you find it? I understand. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. There is one. Was to... Yeah, get There was. There is one more square that this king can go to, and it will be safe. We go to the left, down, and a bit. We are no longer. Left we are no longer. We are no longer. Those in... three green squares. Yes, of course. There is one more square that the king can go to, and it will be safe. Can it capture the rook? Exactly, it can capture the rook. So you see, the king can capture. The king can actually capture. See, that's the, that's the brilliant thing. But it just won't go to a square that it's not safe. Uh, we've talked about uh, the king and his movement. So it's time to move on to the next piece on the chessboard, which is the knight. The knight is the next piece we're going to be talking about. And the knight is the only piece that does not move the way everybody moves. Of course, there will be always one Judah out of every 12. And in this situation, we have about 16 pieces. <laughs> so there's <laughs> definitely once you get out, there should be one Judas. There is not going to do everything according to the way other people are doing it. And that's the knight for you. The knight is the only piece that moves in L shape. That is, look at it. Let's count. Like 0, 1, 2, 12. See, in L shape. Or better still, I can make the L look normal. See? That's one, two, top. That's how the knight moves. Um, yeah. It can also go, um, you, if you want to understand how the knight moves, just you count one, two, turn downwards. That is, if you're going, coming down with the knight, it's just one, two, turn. Or you go to turn to the right, or you do one, two, turn, and you turn to the left. Or you go up and say one, oh, sorry. You say one, two, turn. You turn to the left, or you do one, two, turn, and turn to the right. So that's following vertically. And uh, once you try horizontally, same thing, you just go um, one, two, then you turn up, or you do one, two, then you turn down by going towards the left. If you're going to the right, then you go one, two, you turn, or you go one, two, turn. So in the end, you will have something like this originally. You will have one, two, turn, one, one, two, turn. Going down, one to turn, one to turn, left, one to turn, one to turn, and right, one to turn, and finally one to turn. So then imagine the knight is just like an octopus, tentacles around, and that's how the knight moves. One to turn. Just don't forget that it's very easy. One to turn, one to turn, and the knight. Guess what? It's yeah. the only piece that can jump jump over other pieces. For example, you have a piece here. This piece here is not disturbing the knight. It just still moves one, two, and still lands there. So that's it. That's a knight for you. It doesn't care. So far, wherever it's landing on, is nothing is there. That's the, if anything is there, um, then it has to. You have to consider what is there. Okay, let me put one more thing there. Uh, something like maybe this. Perfect. Now here, the knight can never land on f6. It's not possible. Why? White, white. They're just friends. No problem. The knight cannot move and land on b, uh, what is it called? Um, on c5. Because white piece, white knight. Yeah. Friends. But, look at it. The knight can actually move and do one, two, turn and land exactly on the queen on d2 and capture it. Because it's a black piece. So on the... On D two, yes, yeah. it's a black piece, so it can capture it. So the point is, you can jump over pieces and deliver, um, jump and land on whatever you want to capture there. For example, you can have this here, and now simply put one, two, turn. It's still capturing the point. So far, what is landing on is an opposite colored piece or an empty square. You get the idea?
Do you get the idea? Let's go. Okay. Are you here with me? Yes, sir. Good. So let's do this. Now we are going to use the knife to capture all these pieces on the chessboard. Let's go. So which one do we go for? Which is the first one? Which one the knife can catch? One, yes. Two. One. It's gonna catch the rook on C4. Capture the rook on C4. Capture. Don't forget the word. Yes. Next. Sorry. Capture. Then it's gonna capture the bishop on D6. Correct. Which one is next? It can capture the queen on F. Seven. Good. So from here, continue the sequence. It can capture the bishop on the the bishop on h six. Okay. The knight on g four. Correct. The rook on h two. Perfect. The queen on f three. Okay. The bishop, I mean, now bishop on F1. E1, E1. Bishop on E1. Bishop on E1. That's it. So that takes bishop, that takes knight, that takes rook, that takes queen, and finally that takes bishop. So that's it. That's how the knight moves. This is wonderful. This is really, really wonderful. So uh, <clears throat> there is one more. One more uh, piece we are going to be talking about. And uh, this is a list. Is a list on the chessboard we call them pawns smallest small but mighty the pawn yes the pawn of course so let me first probably just start with this one point here. so in the beginning of the chess game actually pawns can actually move one step forward or two steps forward what it means is that um <clears throat> it can either have a slow start or um it can jump um, I think a, a friend of mine, actually, when he was teaching today in class, he was saying um, the pawns actually do have a, a magic magical power that they can use at their initial first step. Once they don't use it, then it becomes obsolete. They can't use it anymore. But they have the chance to use it as fast at, at the beginning of their um, moves. So here, the pawn here has the option of moving two steps forward. But once it moves two steps forward, there's no longer so the point it can continue, it just continue moving one one step, step. One one step. It can't jump two steps anymore. Uh the other option is if the pawn should move um one step forward in the beginning, it can never move two steps again. Do you get that? Okay. And it's only forward, forward, forward. Just forward, forward, forward. The guy doesn't turn back. He doesn't go back. Just like a soldier. Only forward, it doesn't go back. It does not go left. No, it doesn't go left. It doesn't go left. It doesn't go left. It doesn't go right. It doesn't go left. It doesn't go right. So that's okay. it. Just one step forward. Now there is one condition where the pawn can actually um, change um, movement because um, let's let me quickly look at it. Let me look at it. Um, let's assume we have this situation where there is a pawn. We have a black pawn somewhere here. We have a white pawn somewhere here. Okay, in this situation, let's assume this white pawn just moves two steps forward. Bam. Now it is black's turn to play. Now black decides to move just one step beside it. Now, white can as well go ahead and move forward. Okay? And it can also capture the pawn on d5. Because the rule says the pawn has the right to capture just one square diagonally. So the rook, <laughs> I mean the pawn can move forward, 
But when it comes to capturing, you capture to the diagonal of just one square. So it means if we have two points facing themselves like this, that's um, sorry, if we have two points facing themselves like this, actually they will keep on looking at themselves till Jesus comes. This is blockade, they, they ain't going anywhere. Those two points stuck, okay? okay. Good. But let's now okay. assume we have uh, maybe a black pawn here. Let's see, it is black's turn to play, and black decides to play this pawn forward one step. Now, white suddenly can now move white. and capture uh, diagonally one step. See, um, let me draw the arrow first. So now you can capture, yeah. After you capture, now this pawn can start coming down, like okay, thank you, bridging space. But this pawn, because they don't go backwards. Not possible. So this one can never ever capture backwards. Do you get it? Pawns don't capture backwards. They don't move backwards, neither can they capture backwards. So um maybe after e5, e4, white can decide to move. F6, um, e3, um, f7. Uh, e2 and white gets here first and can promote to the pawns can promote to either a queen, the queen. a knight, a bishop. You can never promote to a king. Yes, you can never promote, can promote to, to other pieces. Or must promote other pieces. You must understand that you can never leave a pawn at the back of the chessboard. You can never leave a pawn at the back rank. You can never leave a pawn. You must change it to something. Either a knight, a rook, a bishop, or a queen. Uh, don't worry. I think there's a point where we'll just talk briefly on um, um, pawn promotion, where we're talking about um, um, major piece promotion and minor pieces promotion. Actually, minor pieces on the ch on the chessboard are just the knight and the bishop, while the major pieces are the rooks and the queen. Do you understand? So, major pieces, queen, rook, minor pieces, yeah. bishop, knight. Simple. Okay. So that is that about um the movement of the chess pieces all of them from a to z totally totally all of them so this is what i'm going to do in the next class that we're going to be having we will actually start talking about attacking and capturing you you have to attack it for example let me give you something simple i know you're going to get it i trust you on this but um for the sake of asking sake let's put this rook here now the question is on um, this where would this rook go to to attack the knight? So this will have to go to G5, G5 to attack the knight on C5. Good. It can go to G5 to attack the knight on C5. Yeah. Good. Is there any other square? <clears throat> do we have, no. Do we have any other square? There's not near that. The rook can go to. Are you sure? Yes, yes, we have C1 exactly. we have to C1. C5. We have C1 from C1 to attack the right also on C5. Do you understand that? So at times when you are playing chess, you have to look at every square on the chessboard. Let me let me make it a little, let me add one more layer to this puzzle. Yeah, okay, let's add one more layer to this puzzle. Now uh oh, oh this is this is this will be um terrible. Let me just see, see like this. Okay, good. Now here, we actually want to attack this knight. We want to attack this knight with our rook. Okay? You have to consider the movement of all the chess pieces on the chessboard. Now, where do you think is safer for this rook to go to to attack this knight? For the rook to attack the knight. Yes, it's safe square where the rook will move to. It's gonna say it's gonna Yeah, it has to go to F5. F5. Okay, so what is the problem with going to C1? Yes. Because the bishop can attack from C1. The bishop, exactly. The bishop will just capture. From H8 to C1. The bishop will just capture. That's the point. The bishop will be attacking the yeah. rook on C1 if the rook goes there. And more like the bishop is controlling that square. Like, eh, only sure, only sure. He's looking at that square. Don't go there. If you go there, I'm going to capture you. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. So the best square to now attack is to yeah. go to um, F5. Now you see, that's the concept of attacking. F5. You want to attack a piece, but you have to be safe in doing so. It's just like someone that wants to probably shoot a lion. You know, you have to hide, be quiet, stand still, aim, and shoot. Not like you just start screaming, yeah, come yeah. on. 
Lion Ida runs and you become the other. Just time. die. <laughs> so that's how it goes. And, uh, and I think this thing happens in uh-huh. most um, uh, Chinese yeah. movies. And it can be annoying. Imagine the um the good guy who actually I mean the exactly. bad guy. Yeah. The bad guy wants to kill the good guy. And the next thing is he's perfectly he has dodged stealth mode. Nobody's seen him. And the next thing he wants to kill him and he starts shouting, Yeah, come on, what's the advertisement for? Just kill the guy. <laughs> of course, they said actors don't die. We're making noise. Stop. <laughs> what's the news? <laughs> actors don't die in films. Because if it doesn't make sense exactly, it will have been, it will have been dead before the movie even starts. Anyways, um, that will be that for today. I believe you enjoyed the class. Um, next class, we'll talk more on capturing, attacking, and we we'll have lots of puzzles to work on, um, which is going to be dealing with um, yeah. attacking a piece, uh, defending the, the or running, or uh, there is a game, uh, there is a puzzle I call hide and seek. You have to be in the midst of like five, six, seven different black pieces, and you will be the only white on the chessboard, and you have to go to a square where nothing can capture you. You have to be safe. Just move to a square where nothing can capture you. And trust me, half of all the squares on the chessboard at that point in time, only one square will be very safe for your king. Okay. Don't worry. We'll get to have that um, in the next class. Um, so, <clears throat> thank you very much. I believe you enjoyed the class. And, um, yes. We'll... Thank you very, very much. I enjoyed the class. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, uh, we'll talk on we talk on the phone so we Thank schedule you. the next class either physical or online you see there's no difference so, between there's sure a little so. difference between online and, 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 and physical class mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah sure exactly you still get it as you report no problems um i remain sincerely yours see you next time cheers bye thank you very much sir. You're welcome. Bye. bye